Times bestselling author and author of the book, Spin Masters, How the Media Ignored the Real News and Helped Reelect Barack Obama. David, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, David. Uh, Tim here with Ed. What do you think about what we're talking about there? Well, you know, it is really extraordinary uh, to see this ongoing. I mean, you pretty much said it all about Benghazi. We had a, uh, a sort of clearly prima facie ridiculous explanation for what happened that the White House was passing around. We had a very preventable incident that, uh, as we know now, if somebody had actually been reading the, the cables and taking seriously Ambassador Stevens' concerns, he might still be alive today. And yet, you know, you have the, the media coverage of this, when it happened, took a story about uh, the str strength of the terrorists and the failure of the Obama foreign policy and turned it instead into a story about a Mitt Romney gaffe. Um, and then, you know, what you, even now what you're seeing is they have lionized Hillary Clinton, and it's as if this failure never occurred. It's as if this hadn't happened on her watch. And, what you bring up about uh, claiming responsibility, it's one of my real pet peeves about being in Washington, to tell you the truth, is that so often you see politicians sort of fake take responsibility this way, where, uh, you know, people like to hear the words, I take responsibility. And so they, people say it, even if they don't mean it, even if they're not taking responsibility in any meaningful way. Yeah, she didn't mean it. Secretary of State didn't. Hillary Clinton, I think she was trying to, quote, take responsibility so that she could take it off President Obama uh, well, even, before even the election. Though, it's not as if she was taking any burden onto herself. It's cheap and easy to take responsibility when there are no consequences. There, there is no actual responsibility. No one's really taking responsibility here. Yeah, yeah exactly. When, when, when you have four dead Americans, as she yelled at the uh, senator in a sort of weird, indignant yeah. <laughs> way, uh, you know, you have four dead Americans. You get a cable to your office, Secretary of State. You're, you're, you're in charge. Your office is in charge of protecting our diplomats around the world. You get a cable from one or two or more, I don't know, from a, an ambassador saying, I got to have security here. I feel my life is in danger, basically. I, I'm, I'm worried about the, the British have left, the Red Cross has left. Right. We're out here by ourselves in the wild, wild west. And, you know, and... And, and then the Secretary of State's office doesn't, Hillary Clinton doesn't respond to protect them. Then they die. And then she uh, doesn't explain why they didn't have any uh, protection, why they didn't have any help. She just says, I take right. responsibility. Well, in that well, case. This is, this is a classic case of what I write about in Spin Masters of the media looking for the most sympathetic interpretation of events possible for President Obama. And, and for Hillary Clinton as well. I mean, you, you, are, you are really seeing it, it, events are contorted, and, and an issue like this, which is very, very important, obviously, is framed in such a way as to cause the minimum political damage. And, you know, in a sense, you could almost say, and, and I do believe this is true, that this story was suppressed completely prior to the election. The story about who was actually to blame and what had happened there, it was, you know, subsumed by the coverage of you know, irrelevancies, first of all, with this, you know, people in the media taking a story like the YouTube video story at face value, I mean, journalists are supposed to be skeptical, and that did not pass the smell test even from the first moment it was uttered. It was a ridiculous, ridiculous explanation that never should have been believed at face value the way it was. And, you know, the, the, that's uh, this is kind of the whole story of Spin Masters, is that uh, uh, suddenly journalists who usually are willing to sell their souls for a good story are not so interested and lose all intellectual curiosity the moment a story goes into territory where it might make Barack Obama look bad or make his presidency look like a failure. Talking to David Fredoso. F-R-E-D-D-O-S-O. -D -D -O. David's book is called Spin Masters. And it's how the media ignored the real uh, news and helped reelect Barack Obama. And it's available uh, everywhere. It's published by Regnery. About that, you know, why do you think that is the case that the media is so in love with President Obama that they don't, that they, they can't objectively cover his administration? And so they, some people call it in the tank for, I don't think that they would have been this way even for President Clinton, 
Uh, do you, do you, uh, this is a this is a love affair that the uh, with the media and Obama. Do you think it's because they don't want to? If they criticize him, they're gonna they're gonna get out of step with their uh, liberal brethren in the media, or either they're gonna be called a racist if they say something negatively against Obama. Right. Well, what what is it? What's the deal? Well, you know, I mean, I think there are elements of of all of those things, but I don't think the average American understands or appreciates just how out of step with the American political mainstream our American political journalists are. Time and again, when surveys are done, and in the first chapter of Spin Masters, I go through several of these surveys of journalists. Uh, you're talking about 90, a, group, a group where 90 percent identify as liberals and vote Democratic uh, consistently. And, you know, that is the case election after election, and probably never quite as much as, as uh, in Barack Obama's first election in 2008. So you're dealing with a group, you know, newsrooms do not look like America, politically speaking, not even close. It's, it would be hard to find another profession except maybe academia where the politics are so slanted. Um, that, that, that goes a long way toward explaining it. And while it's perfectly possible for liberals to be fair with facts and the way they report things, in practice it just doesn't work. I mean, if you think about it, you go to work, you're a liberal, your uh, colleagues are all liberals as well. There's a lot of mutual, you know, self-reinforcement of political views and a complete dismissal of other ways of thinking so that uh, when you, um, you know, when you go to, to make editorial judgments about what's worthy of coverage and what stories should be chased down and which ones, you know, are just aren't that interesting, you're going to end up choosing, and we saw the media choose in 2012, uh, certain stories like, Fast and Furious, like Benghazi, for near total suppression, whereas you saw a lot of stuff that wasn't news and it wasn't even true, uh, like a supposed ban on contraception that somebody somewhere might have been thinking of, which was a complete fraud. Uh, you saw that elevated from not news to news, uh, you know, as if it were a real story of some kind. So, um, you know, this that particular story is a case where you had a media figure, George Stephanopoulos, former Democratic White House aide, create the issue by discussing it and bringing it up on national television in a, a Republican debate and haranguing Mitt Romney about it for about 10 minutes, it seemed like, at the time, uh, just endlessly, as if this were an actual issue, as if someone had actually proposed a ban on contraception. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like Evelyn Waugh and his, uh, you know, journalistic characters in books like vile, novels like Vile Bodies, where they make something up about people wearing green bowler hats, and all of a sudden people start wearing green bowler hats. Mm-hmm. David, let me ask you this. Uh, I, I remember in uh, 1992 when President Clinton won his first uh, election against um, uh, George Bush 41. I remember after the election telling my wife, uh, I said, I, I, I've never seen the media get this involved in an election. And as you mentioned, here we are in, after 2012, uh, the, the media has almost completely uh, embraced this uh, kind of liberal, uh, you know, um, intentional liberal slant for the news media. At the same time, the media's uh, trustworthiness in the minds of the American people has plummeted. So my question to you is, how long can this continue? I mean, how right. long can CNN, NBC, CBS, how long can they maintain their position as the experts on the political uh, life of this country? How long can that last, given, I think, that more and more people are seeing through it and understanding that they're not getting the straight news from these folks? You know, there are a lot of trends in journalism now, and the ascendancy of cable news versus uh, versus broadcast news, the decline in, in ratings, the decline in readership of print uh, publications, it's really hard to see where that's going, because there's always going to be a need for news and analysis and a desire for commentary. Uh, by the same token, um, yeah, a lot of the existing institutions are failing us badly, they're failing us by dropping the ball when it comes to professional standards of news gathering and editorial judgment. Um, they're dropping the ball by not holding, you know, the founders had, a, uh, when they wrote the First Amendment, they didn't write about what journalists should do, but they had very clear ideas about what they should be doing to keep government officials in check, and they wrote about those ideas in other places. Um, and we're not seeing that now. I mean, we're finally having a discussion about this drone program, finally, 
uh, with, that we never had during the 2012 election, for example. Um, we're, we're not, you know, we finally get a court ruling on Obama's illegal recess appointments, whereas when they happened at that time, the Washington Post, the New York Times, and the L.A. Times editorial boards, supposedly taking pride in, you know, speaking truth to power, applauded Obama for abusing his power and violating the clear language of the Constitution uh, by, you know, making recess appointments when the Senate wasn't in recess, by bypassing Congress and kind of claiming powers that presidents were never meant to have. So it it is that you know, and in fact the New York Times did, uh, uh, you know, rail against George W. Bush for doing. And and then, you know, the other thing is that you would never think that if, if, George W. Bush had run a drone program that killed a 16-year-old American boy, would he have been able to go a year and a half without ever being asked about it or being forced to defend the policy? I mean, come on. But that's exactly what happened with Obama. So you have this very clear double standard uh, that, you know, it, it's, it's clear and it's obvious, and I tried to document how it played out in Spin Masters, but I also wanted to give people some idea of what uh, – you know, what can you do about it besides just complain? And it's just so important that conservatives are on the ball because, you know, conservative ideas work when they're tried. But you're not going to get the same fair shake in the media. Uh, we've got about a minute left talking to David Fr- 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 F. That's the way you pronounce your that's, last name, isn't it? That's right. Okay. That's right. <laughs> right. F-R-E-D-D-O-S-O. Spin Masters is the uh, title of his book. Do you... Uh, to what do you attribute the, the Fox News uh, success the last 10 years? Well, there was a lot of low-hanging fruit there, I think. Just conservatives who realized that uh, how liberal the media was. And I think it's, it's something that it's easy for conservatives to recognize, whereas a lot of other people, I think, are just gradually catching on. Um, if you're conservative and you're watching these news broadcasts, you probably know a little bit about the issues that are being discussed, and you're just pulling your hair out or throwing something at the television set because it's so ridiculous. And with the uh, emergence, so, you know, Fox provided a natural place for people to go, but with the emergence of the, of the Internet and, uh, you know, the, the social media, especially the ability to discuss uh, various issues uh, that are being covered in the news, the ridiculous nature of a lot of the coverage is a lot e- it's easier to share with people with other people uh, the frustration over how things are covered yeah. and that you know people know where to go now they have a much clearer idea we've come a long way since the best you could do is throw something at your TV set <laughs> yeah I think Fox News they do have liberals on that's yeah. the thing that differentiates them between a lot of the others is they they have conservatives and liberals, where a lot of the other television networks just have liberals and maybe a token conservative yeah. here and there. Thanks, David. Appreciate your time. Very interesting. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, folks, we are out of time here on the program today. So on behalf of Ed Battagliano, I'm Tim Wildman.